Dawson. Welcome. Thank you, Cam. Welcome to my basement. Thank you. I think I'm going to start with a decently in-depth question because I texted you to come on the podcast after we hung out last week. Mm -hmm. And when I left, I thought to myself, every time I talk to you, I always leave having enjoyed the conversation. So I figured why not have a longer conversation and Mm -hmm. took you a while because you wanted to think about it. If you're anything like me, I go down like different rabbit holes of possibilities of like how it could unfold. And I don't know if you're the same as that, but Mm -hmm. are you? Yeah, Yeah. quite, quite, quite so. So under the assumption I made there, the question is, what made you say yes? So was there a part of the conversation that you predicted that excited you? Like a topic that... So I think of it as like an experiment um, and nothing, you're not, you're never too good for something. And that's, that's not what I was thinking, but it's also not necessarily a risk because you get to, um, you get to uh, oh, bring more awareness to, to what, what's available, you know. We're recording audio right now, and I think that's really cool. And it's and it's the activity in itself that makes things exciting, and being more like aware of what what what's what we're capable of doing, especially how technology is growing. And I think also, like you said, it's good to engage in conversation. And I believe that uh, every time I speak with you, there's a value that we can take from it, and so it's a great time. I agree. I hope other people can take something from this. Even if it's a laugh. Just a laugh, yeah. I'd be happy. You know. Um, but I guess what I was wondering was mm-hmm. in your mind was there a topic that excited you to talk about prior to coming on here? Like, What did you think we were going to talk about? That, excited, that would excite me? Yeah. Honestly, I just think we were... talking about self-awareness talking about growth talking about lessons and skills and things we can adapt to is ultimately what's exciting and what what I think we would be talking about so you know because there's no limit I guess no dude I've done this is 52nd I believe or 53rd with you Hmm. we've gone every direction whether it's just like my own individual Mm. monologue or if it's four people in the room we've covered so many random topics and we just get off track all the time but I love it I think it makes for a better conversation I think most conversations don't naturally go from start to finish Mm -hmm. they get sidetracked I always use my hand as like an analogy and if you're starting a conversation it's like going from your palm up to your index finger but before you get to the tip you jump over to a whole new topic and story that somehow relates and then you jump over to the ring finger but then you'll come back to the index finger and go a little further and eventually you cover all the fingers but it's never linear that's so funny because that usually is the case in like conversation and it's funny because you're always trying to pull like a straight answer from something but you can never really the the answer is is like a multiplication of (laughs) many answers and you have to like reiterate it after the conversation to like kind of recollect what what you what uh, were the, like the the, the like the uh, knowledge bombs that you just received from this conversation totally and so it's like it's interesting that way but that, that's that's where I think writing would come in handy if you wanted to really kind of recoup what you what was said or what was offered you know writing in what sense like just free writing free writing or summarizing what you remember or what you recall just so that it's more black and white and you can use it for the stepping forward from the podcast from just any conversation yeah any conversation yeah I never had written about the podcast after the fact Mm. I am currently going through and cutting the episodes into 
I guess, highlight reels. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's the word, but just segments on sp- certain topics that I want to air. And it's more of a digestible clip. People get intimidated by the hour and a half timestamp. They don't get intimidated yeah. by a five minute timestamp. So. True. That's, 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 that's that programming of the now, of the current times. That five it's minute, that totally. quick 60 second program. People either have an appetite for like five minutes or three hours, it seems. Mm-hmm. Like some of the best movies, some of the best yeah. podcasts. Like, it's funny because I've watched some, like, I've listened to some three hour podcasts and it goes by quick. Like, especially if you're walking a lot. Like, uh, when I was in Red Deer, I was walking a lot to and from work. And I would just, sometimes I'm just like, you know what, this bus system isn't going to cut it for me. Like, I'm going to be waiting for a while. I'd rather be engaged and just walk for like two hours to get home, yeah. even if it's snow or whatever, right? It's like I put put the headphones in, listen to some conversation, and like feel be a little more fulfilled from that. But also, you're getting exercise, right? You're outside, you're breathing it all in, and uh, you're just slowly, patiently getting to your destination. Walking's nice. Yeah. And you were talking about red deer. I grew up small town Alberta as well a little smaller than Red Deer no one walks nobody it's walks crazy that's a, that's a, you that's drive a everywhere and you don't carpool you go to a friend's house and there's seven different cars and you drove past three friends homes to get there but you didn't even think to pick them up mm-hmm. and everyone's on their own time frame it's yeah, yeah. it's a whole different but then you go different. travel the world and you see so many cultures where like, yeah. we're a walking species yeah, and having a dog makes me walk more. Yeah, th- and I realize how nice it is to think you're embarrassed because you walk, and the majority does not walk. Is is like laughable because it's all perspective. It's all in your head, and like, who has the credibility to judge? You know. Do you feel people judge you when you're walking? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I I, th- I think so, but. Um, every day is different, right? Sometimes you're a little more tranquil than other days. Sometimes you're a little more like insecure, and uh, you're just like yeah. you feel like you're like walking, but you're like walking like a horse. You're just like you're like you're like you just feel like you're like waist is like fucking wor- working harder than your legs are or something, <laughs> and you're just it's all in your head. And then other days you're just walking casually and uh, very very like very calmly. You know, with good posture, and you're just definitely enjoying the oxygen and kind of the atmosphere. Yeah, I think your mood has a lot mm-hmm. of effect on that. And it, yeah, and it's true. That's not every day is not consistent. So yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, but ultimately, yeah, it's kind of interesting because uh, we go into stoicism and think you could just take take your head out of the game and like uplift yourself google maps kind of style and uh who's to judge once again i think you're right though i think people would judge you especially going back to like it small will, town alberta yeah. and winter oh yeah if you saw someone walking on the side of mm-hmm. the snow embankment covered in like <laughs> yeah just sand and dirt One time? and mud yeah people will probably judge that like oh who's yeah this guy? For sure. especially here. in that Middle scenario winter. But it's like that's the thing though. Is like, if you're on the rece- if you're the say so to speak, the the judge, um, that's kind of motivating because you are the minority. That's a lesson in itself. If you're the judged as the walker, yeah. If you're the walker, you're the minority. That says something in itself. Like you're willing to take these conditions. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think. So it's a kind of even like stoicism itself. I think you wouldn't have to think much more you've already accepted that people are going to judge and that's their choice mm-hmm. and I guess like the tra- the thought train would end there like even going deeper into thinking about what they're thinking is just a waste and of it's, time and it's silly because like it's a glance they like glance at you a quick trigger of the neurotransmitters and they're fucking gone with their day you know and they might have just like read a weird text stressing. or like they might have something else going on yeah. and just have this look on their face as they look up at you and catch eyes yeah if it even is like it, there's nothing to yeah stress, I don't think like, there's any <laughs> there's nothing to worry about I don't think there's any malice per- but if it if say you are worried it's a quick glimpse of of like judgment it's not even not even 
I've never been, never been worried of walking that I was yeah. being judged. It's interesting, um, yeah. but yeah, I think I, you're right though. Funny fact though is like yeah, and I walked a ton in Red Deer, like the last two years. Um, I walked a ton in Red Deer, and uh, it was always great. And like I was, but at the time, still am influenced by it. But I was reading a lot of Buddhist literature, and I was like reading like biographies of uh, Indian philosophy, like Eastern philosophy. Reread Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. I haven't read that. That's the one that actually Jeff Matheson introduced to me. It was on the shelf one day at the house. And, Jeff that uh, rips. Yes. Hashtag Jeff that rips. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was really influential. And then I, yeah, I just like reread that, but also read it into uh, like a biography of Siddhartha Gautama, which is the Buddha name, the, the boy Buddha. And uh, yeah, just the way he perceives the world, the way he takes information, um, and I applied that into like terribly cold winter conditions in Red Deer. I had my layers. I didn't even have a jacket. I just had like five coats, spring coats, and like layered up and a hoodie, whatever. But it's kind of cool because they're interchangeable. You know, you could five jackets. Come on, that's five coats. You could switch the layers and have different coat each day. But what I'm getting at is like uh, the mindset of the, it's not cold, it's me, it's me reacting to my thinking that it's cold. But yes, it is obviously cold because it's nowhere else is literally just getting just bitter. But yeah. uh, cold is scientific; you can measure it. Scientifically, it's cold. Yeah. yeah, but you still have power over it in the way you perceive it, which also like you know it could be severe or it could be a little less severe than it than scientifically it is. Because you just take your head out of it, you take your thought out of it, and just like give it credit for being grit, being so severe that it's actually admirable because it's so rich in cold. But also, <laughs> lastly, Wim Hof, I was influenced by him at the time too, because I was taking cold showers in the summer. And then winter came and I was like, okay, go for a long walk, negative 35, therapy, right? And that's just the mindset. And so, it took the winter more easily than I ever did. And I was like glad to see those results because it's not fun to fight the cold because that, that shit ain't changing. <laughs> no, and it's all perspective, like, to an extent. You're out there long enough, you will die. Yeah. Everyone would die out there. <laughs> your ears but are hurt. having control over your mind, do you ever read Seneca at all? Not uh, like focally, but yes. Okay. He, I do read his he work has when it it rises a very he sums up what you're trying to say very nicely we often suffer more in imagination than reality mm -hmm. and that could definitely relate to the cold whereas like as your focus fuck it's cold fuck it's cold yeah. you're shivering and you're just feeding into that energy yeah, what's the and weather thoughts. oh it's fucking cold again but if you just try to focus I guess like you said on like Wim Hof if you just focus on your breathing and you just try to separate your mind from your body yeah. it takes practice but it's possible and it yeah. fully changes the way that you perceive and interact with everything yeah it's kind of like that proactive versus reactive thinking I got a question for you if someone was interested like one of your friends into Buddhism or Stoicism what book would you get them as a gift uh, I've, I've actually been through this in a, in a, in a way I recently influenced a friend of mine um, however, I did not buy him the book. He actually bought it for me. <laughs> but he, he, he obviously got a copy of himself through thrift stores, etc. But I would recommend, obviously, Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right because he deserves it. And Autobiography of a Yogi. Autobiography of a which Yogi. Which is written by Yogananda Pramanhansa. And okay. uh, he's from Calcutta. And I believe uh, India which is like the southern west point of India and uh, it's a biography of him growing up from a boy learning from like these like gurus and mentors into his like adulthood whatever into being a teacher and migrating to the United States but it, there's, there's in each 
stage of his life, there's like a there's and the stories he tells of his gurus, the posture is so great it's hard to not be influenced by it. Because it's it's such a like a level headed posture that kind of signals um, like patience, uh, calm and uh, egolessness as yeah. much as that's possible in our Western world. But I don't think it's, it's the really Western world. I think it's the human animal. The human race. I think the ego, the ego is also responsible for a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I think with anything, you yeah, know, equally good and bad, even if it doesn't seem that way immediately. Yeah, but a very kind posture. And uh, I like that. But the, that one's thicker. It's like a 300, 400 page book but Siddhartha is 120 pages or something like that so anyone who's not really that keen on dedicating time to a book is, but still wants to be influenced by Buddhism can definitely read Siddhartha and that's going to be like the gateway into them wanting to continue. Maybe. Yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't force it. I've also got an easy one for listeners and maybe yourself if you want that it doesn't take up much time every day, but it makes a difference. I think we talked about it last week. Have you heard of Ryan Holiday? Mm-hmm. He Absolutely. wrote a book called The Daily Stoic. And have you heard of that? Bought it. Yeah, The Daily Stoic. Yeah, it's right there. So, um, do you read it? I did. It's nice. It's, so a, it's in uh, Alberta currently. Every It basically follows a calendar. So you yeah. get it January 1st, and it just goes through old Stoic quotes or examples from people from different generations, from different civilizations. And the author, there's two authors actually, it's Ryan Holiday and someone else. Sorry for the dude whose name I'm forgetting. Um, But they basically translate this and how it relates to everyday life in our world. And I found it to be very helpful and easily digestible. I wake up in the morning, I read one page. And to be honest, sometimes it's only like, eight sentences it's pretty quick easy but it just leaves you in a different state of mind as you're starting the day like Mm -hmm. the difference in my life when I woke up and read that page versus woke up and checked Instagram or Facebook or any of I'm starting proactive not reactive in the mornings I'm not reacting Mm -hmm. to stimulus coming in I'm creating my own thoughts seeing how this relates to my life Mm -hmm. and then going from there building on that but I guess you already have the book anyone listening that wants to get into stoicism that's a good entry point crazy situation is actually um, me trying to pursue more creativity and whatnot. one of my first video edits uh, vlogs believe it or not um, was me going to chapters to buy Daily Stoic with a friend of mine who was driving a Honda Civic and it made it easy and we made a video out of it. Visited Tim Hortons and etc. But it was a that was the day I bought the book, made a vlog with it, and I actually have the project. I just it's just not uploaded because it's kinda silly. But um yeah, it was a good experience. Do you plan on uploading it? Uh it's very amateur, but it would be it would be a good laugh and I I I, I should. But it's not as professional as I'm going for. I think you should. Yeah. Toss it out there. Yeah. No one's perfect. None of our work's going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. I have not uploaded anything, whether it's podcast, whether it's a skate clip, a foosball video, where I'm 100% satisfied. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people yeah. can relate to, just this internal perfectionist. But I Absolutely. think it is important just to put it out there move on, let it go. And I'm having this realization now going back over all of the videos and cutting them into segments how horrible some of the episodes were and just a lot of like social awareness that I didn't have in conversations. So even at the end of it, mine's still amateur and I've grown from the process and now looking back at it, I can actually, I can relate directly to the growth. I can see my errors that I've like overcome at least temporarily. I think it's always a battle in being aware of who you're talking to, what you're talking about, and just like staying focused and dialed in. But I think it would help. Like I don't think it's going to hurt you to put it out. Oh, no. The best things in life 
are on that other My side. My identity is already exploited. <laughs> There's no going back. So what's the what was the catalyst? What sparked wanting to do vlogs? Because I didn't know you were doing vlogs until I saw you on the street randomly, and you told me like new vlog uploading tonight, and then you didn't upload <laughs> it that night. <laughs> I didn't upload it. It was because I saw, I think I was having like export issues or no no no. I ended up like filming late or something, skateboarding, and didn't get that midnight mark. I thought I was going to like crush it, but I ended up not crushing it as quickly. So I just was, yeah, I uploaded it later on. What sparked the idea for a vlog though? Um, because it's so, uh, it's actually extremely entertaining to watch certain vlogs. Like I was inspired by this BMX, uh, this BMX rider out of New York, and he's like pro for cult BMX, and I mean, uh, the only experience I have in BMX is like a summer or like a summer, like growing up just fiddling around with a BMX, right? You got boards, you got bike, you got like scooter, right? But scooter was always just like, I can't BMX that good. I can't bar spin on a BMX because I'm a small ass child, but I can s s emulate it on a scooter with the imagination that I'm on a BMX. Yeah. Right, so don't get me wrong. I never ever took sk who's scootering seriously. I always use scootering as an emulation of how I would be on a BMX because the BMX was like that's the fucking real deal. More difficult, you know? Yeah, it was always like this is badass, you know. The the scooter was always just like my mom bought this for me when I was five, and me and my brother would share it. And this shit is sounds like shit. Just you know, like just loose, like. Really, really like perishable. Thirty dollar razor scooter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But never took it seriously. I think I was already skating at the time. So, plus scootering wasn't on the X Games. So how was a young child supposed to get influenced <laughs> by that? I was gonna say you got very defensive, letting people know that you didn't actually take the scootering <laughs> seriously, as if people are no, gonna judge a five-year-old. Well, you gotta admire the fact jumping. that the imagination was always directed to our BMX, motivated on bike and BMXing. But yeah, anyways, it's it's really cool. Like I has a little those little connection of BMX in my life and. It was always a good time with my friends, but skateboarding was day one, always. It was always the, the go-to. Yeah, I think that like if anyone I, I was knows never motivated by the group, in a sense, so like I was always like, oh, once the group kind of phased out of biking, I was like, okay, oh, back to the board, or like, I'm, you know? But um, anyways, yeah, I was just, I'm just, there's like these vloggers out of, uh, I could name him Anthony Panza, for example. Uh, these are like really well-known YouTube creators, uh, also Billy from FTL. Anyways, there I was work when I was working um, at the store recently. I had a lot of downtime. I would watch their vlogs frequently, and it was, I was always just so juiced, laughing, like having a good time, just like inspired by this. And I chose, I wanted to emulate that in a sense because I'm always thinking. Um, in a self-employed kind of sense where I want to create and produce and like share with people and or like you know have something to give and that and like another thing too I could sorry I could tie this into like consumption right and let's be honest this ties into like Buddhism this talks like you know spirituality um, uh, a lot of values right continue on that right Keep going. Okay. How do they tie together? They're they're tied together because we live in a consumerist economy, and Buddhist Buddhism is kind of recluse in a way, but a very like level-headed recluse, a very self-aware recluse, and they're kind of gain, getting insight through their deep analysis. Um, and uh, I was just excited to the fact that you can you can create and also fulfillment comes from like creating right we're we're humans right the more we create the more like in tune we get with evolution which is our product and so as a consumer it's hard to really evolve on a, at a good pace or like at a pace that's really fulfilling to your like heart and so I just wanted to create videos to kind of promote proactiveness in my life to promote fulfillment you know to kind of get myself out of a, like a domino effect of like spiraling so 
that's ultimately what sparked the vision for creating YouTube videos as best as I can. And uh, that's exciting to me. To stop you from spiraling, I didn't realize that was the motivation. <laughs> no, not, 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 not entirely, but not spiraling, but just doing, just, just like s spending my time in the wrong ways. I want to spend time that in the ways that fulfill me and like contribute to me as an authentic being. You want to have a purpose and you want your actions to yeah. align with the purpose. Yeah, and like I, I'm creating something, you know, the bottom line is creation for me because that's what's entertaining. Like when you're just in the zone, when you're just like completely enthralled by the project, the, the immediate physical thing at hand. And like, like yeah, I don't know, a lot of people can relate to skateboarding, being in the zone or playing sports, playing like basketball, whatever. They're in the zone, right? And that's that's Flow state. pretty much what you're doing when you, when you're at the end of the day, you filmed a bunch of stuff, and now you're in your room, with office, like library, whatever, looking at the screen, looking at the timeline, chopping it up, and creating something, and it's it's authentic because like. Nobody else has these clips. Nobody else is using the, the style that you adopted, you know? It couldn't be more authentic. It's it, literally, yeah, it's, it's you. It's literally like... It's not rehearsed. It's just Yeah, you. there is no remake. Yeah. So that's what's exciting. There's also no vlog if you don't have the balls to upload it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I, I, that's been uploading <laughs> vlogs. Except for like it's the project, I guess. The thing is, like, yeah, you just consistency is the, the hard part. But there's always something to learn. There's so much to like, kind of analyze. Like, it's that's what's so interesting is like any idea is potential. It's, it's cool. Like, I could look outside right now and be like, oh, rain, <laughs> uh, concrete, and grass. Hmm. What do they have in common? I have no idea. You could literally, or my mind went. I could just make. Have you ever seen a flower grow grow out of the cement, like a crack in the concrete, yeah, yeah. and then a flower grows out of it? That's yeah. rain, grass, cement. True. <laughs> um, but yeah, the way we can perceive our environment and then promote it in some expressive way is really exciting. For sure. And I think you touched on something really important there. You stress that if you're working towards your vision or just something that you identify with, it reminded me of another quote from one of the Stoics. And it's, one whose life has a how, or has a why, can bear almost any how. So as long as you know where you're going, the day-to-day -day things like the cold weather are even worse things like losing a relationship, losing a career, they're not going to stop you from the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. They're just like speed bumps along the way. Yeah, they're pillars. Honest. You also touched on it being difficult for you to find consistency. Is there any tricks that you have? Or what, what are you doing right when you are consistent? Opportunity, I guess. Weather permitting. Um... And I'd say ultimately that. I think weather permitting is an excuse. It, it is an excuse. Stand aside but in the pouring rain. In a niche blog. of skateboarding, somewhat. You skated I'm here. I'm not going to go to a bonzer or like. You skated here on a waterboard yeah. in the rain. Yeah. You could have filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just call it. Um, so. Shit. Yeah, the consistency is like, how much do I value this niche? You know. Yeah. And if you're like, you have like, not doing it consistently is like you're kind of wavering it. You're kind of like I'm still moving towards trying to find a niche that's more that 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 I'm more grasped by. You know, that grabs my attention or something I want to share more and more like compelled to share. You're waiting for motivation to strike versus. Yeah. However, planning a structure. However, right? I've thought of the fact that like just forcing consistency, just getting it done, and I, I think I'm going to take that approach here within this starting point now, right? Yeah. Because um, 
I tend to work evenings lately, and I find that I am not waking up as early as I should, or I'm just like have misaligned motives. So just getting up and getting out of the way, going outside immediately, you know, just documenting anything and just creating a timeline of like daily daily activities is a good way to kind of pick and choose the ones that are good and ones aren't. That way you have like a cluster and you can see what's best. Yeah. Even like that and something will come from that, right? Something will create like you just work with it and something else something will grab your attention where you're like okay this is the next step this makes sense yeah and I have the time to edit so I related with what what you were saying a lot like there is something about when there's always something to talk about the motivation comes to you like something just clicks you see some sort of inspiration Mm -hmm. and then you have an idea that comes to your mind but that doesn't happen on a daily basis or a weekly basis. No. And there is something to having a consistent schedule as well. And I will say that the times that I have ideas, I guess my relation would just be the podcast. So some guests, some guests kind of fall into your lap, like they're in town for that week or you have this mutual friend and you never thought that you'd actually meet them. And all of a sudden you ha- I have a guest that I didn't think that I was going to be sitting down with. Those, to me, are similar to what you're talking about, where you just have the motivation strike you. Mm -hmm. But I found it very important, too. Even when everyone else couldn't make it, I would go do it myself Mm -hmm. and just talk and get in the habit. And I think there's something to both sides of that. And sometimes if you're just forcing yourself to try to create, it's not going to be the best product. But if you do put the time in and like spend an hour, two hours, even just brainstorming, you are going to get some fruit that comes from that process. I guess I wish I had a little more willpower to be consistent. Yeah. It's, it's, and I found that it's not always easy when you're kind of up in the air of what decision, what, what, who you're trying to help in a way, who, what's your vision. But what is your vision? Documentation. Uh, who are you trying to help? I think, I think ultimately promote promoting like self-awareness just helping people kind of um, see things in different lights to kind of raise them from a, a lower level not not in a, not a bad way but like a lower level of that's not healthy to, to their psyche and just like kind of re- recommending a process just like certain activities that can kind of give them a little peace of mind and but that's I kind of just mentioned it, which is creativity. Yeah. Do like physically do something, physically create something. It could be it could be written words on paper. It could be just reading. Um, it could be editing a video, or even just one clip. Uh, or just filming bushes, filming cars, and like. Mesh, putting like squishing, squishing them together, you know. And now you have like music, whatever. You have something to kind of look forward to, even if it sucks. Like it doesn't matter because, like, what else are you gonna do with your time? Yeah, it's self. Like, what, what, what's gonna be like? I don't know. What's gonna fulfill you? Like watching someone else do what you is going to make you fulfilling watching somebody else fulfill their lives instead of you attempting to follow that I don't know if you're asking that sarcastically or not but sometimes like I'm drawn to people that are doing things that you can tell is their passion like even if it's not a successful endeavor but this is what this person is meant to do at this time in their life like I'm very drawn to people like that so I I don't know if you were being sarcastic but I I think I was just misaligned and I was just speaking before I was <laughs> analyzing but uh, I, I agree because like inspiration is ha- like you know watching people make vlogs I'm not creating them I'm watching them that's me doing the exact opposite of what I just said um, so yes inspiration definitely comes from watching also I think with vlogs too and maybe I'm misinterpreting the way you attach yourself to them but mm-hmm. for me it's podcasts and just like 
I guess maybe vlogs, but YouTube videos of just personalities that I like. Yeah. Um, I covered it a lot before. This was kind of the reason that I wanted to start the podcast. In cities like Vancouver, we are surrounded all the time, yet we feel isolated. Like, I literally knocked on my neighbor's door for the first time yesterday. I don't even know his name. Like, he moved in maybe two months ago, mm-hmm. and we'll say hello in passing. I think I know his name, but I, I wouldn't put money on it, you know? Like, we're not friends. How much money? <laughs> I put 20 bucks on it that I know. Bucks. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong, though, honestly. But that's what I mean. Like, you don't have this sense of community that humans have evolved with. Mm-hmm. Like, even growing up small town, like, one person will plow all the driveways because they have a truck with the snow plow in the front. Mm-hmm. You help each other, you know? And I think that we're supposed to help each other. And I think that I feel the best personally when I'm in these relationships with people that I know. So when you're walking around by yourself in Red Deer in the snow, it looks like you're isolated, but in your ears, you are listening to a podcast, likely someone that you're familiar with. And it seems like you know that person or those people mm-hmm. on the other end. Mm-hmm. So even though you're not actually contributing to the conversation, yeah, time goes by quick. it's tricking your brain that you're involved in the conversation. So we're in this world where we feel isolated, yet this energy of vlogs and podcasts, it lets you feel like you're with people mm-hmm. almost. It's like tricking your brain. So that's it for me. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, like, that's, a, that's dead on, spot on. Like I would probably would not be spending time watching people um, and like learning from them. I'm shocked at how drawn into it I am. Because like it's really exciting. Like why would I, I don't BMX. What the fuck am I doing watching BMX? Like it's because the people creating the videos are doing a great job and it's really stimulating. They go to like getting kicked up by security, showing facial expressions. Like you are with them. You are riding a BMX. I don't. With them. (laughs) And you feel like you are a part of the community and it's exciting and it's especially the, the way they edit, the way they like capture you're enjoying you're having a good time I think you also resonate with BMX because of the parallels with skating yeah you absolutely. deal with getting kicked out with security all the time like, yeah it's very parallel we're pretty much the same thing like, we're, it's the same yeah. hobby just a different so if we're with a bus or ass to get to a next block yeah we can't push our hill yeah, they can bike everywhere we can't ride on grass or yeah they got some perks we can't go as fast we can skate with injured upper body they can't bike. yeah yeah like if you have Luckily, like a broken shoulder I would or broken wrist, if, like, I, if I biked I yeah you need full body BMX. for sure pros and cons but I think that could also be a reason why you're drawn to that's that why I didn't continue block. riding bike because I was like I'm not trying to toast my it was an injury thing with a bike bar really it was an injury thing well like I don't know like you're if you're a skateboarder you're not you don't you're not trying to do bar spins or like 360s like your body like 540s whatever like your body just doesn't your body doesn't like you don't use your four limbs on a skateboard to like maneuver this tool you know so it like it's a little off point so like certain fears like even with snowboarding you're like I'm gonna do a 540 like no no you don't we don't do 540s as as street skateboarders like unless you're like pro as fuck but yeah it's rare to see a street five yeah street five (laughs) like um, Dude, who did? There's a street backflip. Who's the street backflip on the barrier? Calgary guy. Early grab melon backflip out of a barrier, like a wally up. I couldn't point the finger. Oh, dude, that was fucking crazy. <laughs> Can I play a game with you? Yeah. I'll read my answers. I've already done the quiz. Um, I really enjoyed this. What is your favorite animal? Lately, I've been really fond of elephants. Elephants. Yes. Okay. Want me to describe? Can you use? I would like three adjectives. Like elephants and cheetahs. No, pick one. Stick with elephants. Elephants. But why? What do you like about I like, elephants? I like elephants because their 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 mass is very deceiving, but their kindness is very very real. Like it's a very con. It's a very deceiving creature. Deceiving creature. Like uh, I don't know, I don't know, like an untamed uh, elephant. How how like calm it is. Like if you just go walk up to an elephant, it's gonna just like not 
give a shit. One you know? that's not in the zoo and drugged up. Yeah. yeah. But like they're pretty kind. Though. But you know what I mean? Like elephants are pretty docile. Yeah. If that's the right word. For how large they are, for how like dinosaur oriented they are. Yeah, related that's to so a woolly awesome, mammoth with a tusk like, and all right. I, I'm really I'm really into like deceiving Okay. Others, you so know, you know the elephant not in a is, bad way. Just interesting they're very in like very like anti-societal like norms kind of way. Okay, well we'll we'll leave that as just deceiving. Do you have two more adjectives to describe what you like about elephants? Deceiving, they seem content, and um, and they're vegetarian. Vegetarian. <laughs> like, come on! If you want to, like. If we could, I don't know. They're 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 like they're not human, right? Okay, different different body type. But um, let's if we wanted to go into diet or something, the elephant ain't eating meat. Like the elephant is not eating meat. Okay, you want to grow muscles? <laughs> Talk to the elephant. I don't think that's a fair comparison, though. No, it's a terrible it's such comparison. A, it's such it's a, a leap, it's dude. An elephant, not a it's human. such a leap. Like even people, they're like, oh. Gorillas are vegetarians, like yeah, and they spend fourteen hours a day eating because they need to eat for fourteen yeah. hours a day to get enough nutrients to survive. <laughs> and they just sit there and eat all they day. Like, we don't have the time to do that. Got a job, gorilla. <laughs> yeah, it was just like <laughs> then I don't. You're comparing an elephant's diet to our diet, like yeah. they're not the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I heard a really good way to describe but it, it. The idea is, is funny. It's like a very comedy kind of vision. But this way, someone described it like this. Um. Green shit grows on the ground. Dumb shit eats the green shit. Smart shit kills and eats the dumb shit. And if you look at <laughs> if you look at the intelligence of animals that are predators, it's higher than animals that are prey. Prey animals are just focused on don't die, don't die, don't die. Is there mm -hmm. like they're just looking around the woods, like always afraid, whereas like a predator has different levels to their thinking and their process of like trapping and yeah. the game. Of hunting, but Matrix. yeah. Anyways, awesome. they're vegetarian, they're content, and they're deceiving creatures. The next question: What is your favorite article of clothing? This can be something that you own, something that you don't own, but you know of, like someone else's yeah. shirt, hat, whatever it is. It's a good question. I think my my favorite article of clothing is just like non-branded fabric that is single colored can you pick um, one but not always because I could get I, if I was trying to finance like other other product I could get I'd probably say like Mark's work warehouse pants okay um but what are those like dickies let's just say dickies I don't have any dickies though I have one pair and they don't fit me right. But the fabric is the idea. Um, Continue on that. Can you give me some I'm really, descriptive I'll, words? My, I don't have a brand. I just say like button-ups. Like button-ups is... Are you changing from the pants to button-ups? Your favorite clothing? Yeah. Button-ups. Button-up shirts? <laughs> button-up shirts. And okay. uh, I don't... It doesn't matter what brand. Just like... Yeah, I understand. Um... Just give me a nice button up that is not that does not say this is on it. This is yeah. more on Just the way. Give me a nice patterned button up. I don't want any words on it, unless it says like it's like a triangle in the corner pocket or like hello, like my name is little Liam. logo like an umbrella or like you know, Hellas maybe, but like like no no brand, just pattern or or like blank blank, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, Okay. Very, very clean. This is more important to describe why you like it, not necessarily what you like. Yeah. So, do you have three adjectives to describe why you like plain button-up shirts with yeah. no to very minimal logos? Yeah, no promotion. Or no promotion. But what do you like about them? I like the fact that they're simple. Um, they're simple. They're very humble, and uh, and uh, correct, <laughs> like very clean. You know, uh, um, 
it's like an informal formality. So it's like I'm getting to both sides of the spectrum, but with more ease. I'm getting like the finet, like the beauty and the, the formal out formality of like a tuxedo, but that's not what I'm looking for. And the informality of like a skate rat, not but, I'm, but fusing the two into leisure formality that's okay. like useful for all types of the day. Perfect answer. The final question. What is your favorite body of water? And this can be anything as big as the ocean yeah. to you can choose a raindrop if you'd like. My favorite body of water? Yeah. I like rivers. I also Can you think of one in particular? For this? <laughs> oh man, this would be funny if I said it. People would look people would just be <laughs> laughing. But uh just the only one that comes to memory is like like Red Deer River? If there was more like recreational waterfront spaces, which there are, but I like I want a river that I can swim in, you know. Okay. Like I like I like very I like. Actually, no. I can let me re. I like glacier water. Glacier water. Yeah. That cold temperature, those cold temperatures, like it's like caffeine, but without the caffeine, it's just cold water, right? You get in there. Your body just loves it. You get the minerals, you get the shock, and it also tests you, tests your tolerance. And you can, the longer you swim in it, the more you like acclimate towards it, and you can like enjoy it. Can you and try? It's also it's really nice because like if you're in like say for example, um, Alberta, glacier water, or whatever, the mountains are right there. But the reason I like it is my favorite body of water essentially is like. An accessible, just like deep body of water that I do not have to get my feet soaked in sand, or like you know, because mm. the what I'm describing is like there was stones. Like as soon as I get out of this glacier water, there's like a stone I can stand on. Rock beach. And I put my socks on and I'm out. You know, dude. There's nothing worse than like traveling. Like man. And then you just I have used to socks love, I love swimming. Like that's what I grew up doing. Like I like courses and like life riding courses and but like since moving once mo leaving Ontario moving to the prairies um I didn't swim in water for a while because I was always like so judgmental of like the Sylvan Lake I was always like damn I have to walk like 100 feet out just to swim instead of just like walking 4 feet and just being ready to swim but yeah I was always like yeah I just kind of like slowly got out of my area before we move on to what these all represent, can you try to use adjectives to describe the glacier water? Okay, yeah, simple attempt. descriptive words. Adjectives? Let's let's try and let's experiment. <laughs> uh, I'd say um, I want to be quick here. Accessible. Um, glacier water is accessible. <laughs> <laughs> It's accessible from like as far as like avoiding sand goes, it's, it, or it's also accessible because it's cold as hell, right? So you're like you can't second guess it. It's accessible because you're in it or you're not. You know, like you you don't don't second guess yourself. You're in it or you're not, and uh, it it tests your like it kind of shows you how tolerable you are. And thirdly, um, it keeps you alert. Uh, these are even adjectives. Yeah. <laughs> alert is. Okay, so what these represent, I believe it was Freud who created this. Um, your favorite animal is the way that you view yourself. So Liam, you view yourself as one deceiving creature, content, and vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I slipped today. <laughs> I bought a save on foods. Calabrese wrap. Uh oh. And your yeah, favorite wow. article of clothing is the way that others view you. So people see you as simple, 
humble, clean, correct, informal <laughs> formality. <laughs> oh no, that's that's, that's that, great. Is that a bad thing? No, it's it's okay. It's just, it's just funny to hear it back. Simple, like, humble, that clean. It's not bad. Like, and then your favorite body of water is the way that you view sex. My favorite body of water is so the way glacier I water. Sex to you is caffeine without the caffeine. <laughs> you're in it or you're Damn, not. It sounds tranquil. Huh? And Tranquility. It, keep, it keeps you alert. <laughs> it does. And accessible. You also use accessible. But I wouldn't agree that glacier water is accessible. You have to go out to a glacier to get there. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I have mine listed here too. I feel like it's only fair. I played this game with quite a few people. I've got a full list. It's Dude, some of the answers are hilarious. My Korean friend, his fair body of water was the ocean. Yeah. And that's the way he views sex. And one of his ways of describing it was, sometimes smells good. Oh, <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. Dude. <laughs> um, oh, don't do us like that. <laughs> mine favorite animal is my dog. She's loyal. She always like protects me and loved ones. Like even if you were outside walking with her in the street, she's always like alert just to protect you, which I love about her. Energetic, happy all the time, just running around, bouncing off the walls, and focused. So I guess that's the way that I view myself. I can't argue it. I guess. Uh, my favorite article of clothing is just a plain black T-shirt, very similar to what you said. It's comfortable. It's consistent, it's like simple, but yet stylish at the same time, and well-fitting. So that's not a brand though, is it? I, the shirt that I'm thinking of is a brand. Is a like brand. I'm thinking of my personal shirt, mm -hmm. but I'm wearing it right now underneath the sweater. There's nothing on it. So you wouldn't know what brand it is, yeah. but it is a brand. Okay. Um, and then my favorite water is a cold glass of water because it's refreshing. That's amazing, that's a good answer. It's Perfectly simple, and I love this. It's only, it's <laughs> the only feeling that it creates in my chest. Yeah. You know, after you're skating in summer, and then you just drink that ice glass mm -hmm. of water, and you just feel it slowly dropping down your chest. I feel like it's just giving me more life. Yeah, but the relation no to that other rejuvenation. To the relation to that and sex, so like the feeling in my chest. There are obviously different feelings, but the fact that I chose to describe the water yeah. with the same like. I yeah. hope you don't get a feeling in your chest. I do. I definitely do. It's not a negative feeling. I'm not having a heart attack, but I definitely have this like yeah, yeah. passion, yeah. animalistic drive in my chest. But I feel like maybe it's just like put it on the female perspective. I, I don't think <laughs> that their perspective in your changes. Chest. Oh, I get you. That's that's a severe situation. <laughs> yeah, not the chest. <laughs> not, the not not that not that far. It's, uh, it's uh, ruining some internal organs before that <laughs> gets there. I don't think that's how that works. Oh no! <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was a cool little test. I like doing that with people. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You should do it to your roommates. See what they say. Is it an app? No, I just wrote it down in my notes. Huh. I have a list of like ten different people that I've done it with. Okay. Yeah. I got a pimple on my. My chin. Just does, it's all good because uh, it's gonna go away. I won't you ever have a pimple again. Got a pimple on your chin. Yeah, it's like tiny. You think you'll never get one again? Well, it won't be detrimental to my health. <laughs> like, you won't be able to see it. Like, yeah. you can't see it. It's pimple. in your beard. I could be like, I have a pimple, but it's like minuscule and it's in your beard. It's behind all the, the beard, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. no way someone would see that. Do you follow. Steve Hoof's kid on Instagram, Skater Hendrix. <laughs> I, I follow Steve. Dude. I don't think, I might, I think I, I probably do. Dude, he's but ripping. But like he's, yeah, he's crazy. He's five years old and he's blunt faking. Yeah? Yeah. Holy. That's so Dude, crazy. that's insane because. And he's so that's good. That's so crazy because I feel like he's just, like Steve isn't, he's just so effortless with it and it's, but his son just like already wants to progress he wants it it's he not just, even Steve wanting him to skate like yeah. Hendrix asks every day to like he literally is already like one more try one more one more try 
okay, just give me like one more try. And then an hour and a half later, they leave. Like, he's already a skater. He's already yeah. just addicted. He can't break the, like, the habit. Wow. Okay, so he's already driven. Dude, he just, there's a like, spine. But then it's uh, it's self-explanatory. It's sick, though. Right? That's, that's he's five. Yeah, he's five. Quit touching your zit. Okay. <laughs> Keep stop. poking it. <laughs> this is like, it's a weird sensation. Oh. While you were gone, I saw on Instagram, my Korean friend, he's hosting someone right now, and she's learning how to tattoo, she, being apprenticed by Brown. And he just posted a story of her going home. And I guess she's leaving because the coronavirus is so bad and it just had a massive outbreak in Korea. And I've got a one-way ticket to Korea in April. And the worse this gets, the more I'm realizing maybe I should look into this and reconsider. But I've already paid for the flight. And you know, like, huh. and I have a layover in China as well, which isn't... It's one of the more... That's a crazy situation because I don't do my research that heavily. Neither do I. Um, I don't actually don't. I've kind of like disposed of it from my thinking because I don't want to have to research it and it affects my thinking. Therefore, I'm going to like reverse the nonchalant effect I have about perceiving it. Yeah, like again, you like, suffer more. I feel more. like if I think about it more, I'm going to be like... You suffer more in ima- like, imagination. Attracting it. And not only that... I mean, it's attracting some form of illness. It's also just not healthy to always be worried and living yeah. in fear constantly. So the more you... And, like, I don't know, like, at the same time, like, I've probably, like, thought about this... I've thought about this many times before, but... Um, say, like, something, like, something detrimental was going to happen to Earth, whatever was the case, and it's literally happening before your eyes. Um... Would you, like, I personally, I personally have faith in myself to accept it and kind of, if, it, if I actually don't have any form of, like, alteration that I can give to, like, avoid it, I should, like, welcome it so that I die without resistance and uh, I can continue on with the next step. But So... If I can understand correctly, it's almost like you're accept, you're accepting death. Yes. Like you realize it's a destination that yeah. we all share. If it's unpreventable. And if yeah. it's coming our way, there's no it's point of way, yeah. letting it. I think the fear of death holds a lot of people back. A lot of times, this is very. This echoes the podcast I just did recently with Priya, the one I just uploaded last. We go over this a lot. She asks like how death motivated me. Um, yeah. how death motivates her True. and just looking at like psychedelic studies where a lot of mushroom trials the biggest takeaway that I saw or at least like the most overlap in people's like case studies is that they overcame their fear of death and this is people that are dealing with like terminal illness so they were given this after already being diagnosed with whatever yeah two months left, six months left. They're on their way out. They have a, a rough date in mind. So they must be in a different state of mind than I can relate to having never been there myself. But they said that the mushroom helped them accept like, yeah, we're going to die. And it seems like that's what you're talking about. Just like knowing that if it's inevitable yeah. not to let it like bring you and, down. And like it's, as far as natural medicine goes, that's also a ne- the next step to creating a solution is altering your like thinking patterns to promote wellness even if you are literally not gonna be well um the next best step you can take is like internal medicine which is the way you perceive your illness and if not that is the plan b or the the part two of helping yourself overcome this terminal illness um yeah. Um, you won't besides all the the physical like medicine treatments and things of that sort. Like if so like, speak like it's either a miracle or it's like you're you're going to die. That's like option 1. The next step is like perhaps it's not going to be so sudden because you're tra- you're tra- you're like 
changing your like neurochemistry to, th to, to think about it differently and then that would be like that turning point of potential healing because your brain is now working with you instead of against yourself almost like placebo but more of just like you having control over your thought mm -hmm. thoughts plural and like I don't know it's free right that's what I'm saying is like that's the best thing that's the best option you have I think you have to believe it though you have yeah, and you it's have to really believe it. it's a meditate it's on it more of a believe? different that's difficult people believe things more when they're more expensive it's proven placebos work better if the sugar pill is more expensive than the other one so it is free but I think it's one of the most difficult mm -hmm. things that any human but can I, do is like a highly spiritual person may have a better grasp for it you know for sure, I'm just saying let, they've already let go of so many conceptions. Yeah, I'm just saying it's very difficult to get to that elevated state of yeah. spiritualness, and it's very difficult. But mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not yeah. disagreeing with you. I'm just saying like this is like some very it's deep difficult Eastern philosophy. Yeah, but like, what are other options? At least yeah, you're faced. With <laughs> you might as well lie to yourself on the way to like not being alive. No, not like a ne negative no, way, no, no, but no, no, like no. in a supportive way. Yes, I wonder. But I'm not. I've never been in this situation myself as well, so I couldn't. We can only assume I what we do. Pledge, I couldn't like pledge for that. I would like to think that my behavior would be consistent with the way I've been in good times and bad times leading up to this point. But who knows? Yeah, like, it's, it, but the, uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a tough vision. It's a tough like place because um, we're always trying to grow and like activate new skills so to have a, an abruption of like detouring of like your lifespan you, you just think like well my values are shifted and that's why so many people eliminate their occupations as soon as they're discovered ill because they're like okay I haven't been living my life the right way yeah so I'm gonna withdraw from everything I'm gonna blow all my money well like whatever you can be whatever be free I'm just gonna eliminate myself from the matrix and go live or like go be me that's my Instagram you know? handle right. my quote have you seen the quote on my Instagram I don't know who no. who said it um, huh. every man has two lives the second begins when he realizes that he only has one what I think though to just like continue on that train of thought you were talking about how you cut out reading about the virus and you just don't want to like overwhelm your mind with negative thoughts. I think as humans, it's not just our eating, it's our mind. We have things that we need as a species that our body tells us we need more, we need more mm -hmm. sugar and carbs. I crave them every single day. and. I think that's because we've evolved being scarce. We didn't have endless sugar and carbs at our disposal. So when you did get them, it did make sense to indulge and eat everything you can until you're full. But now that it's this, we live in this world of abundance, mm -hmm. at least here, it's not good for us to constantly consume these things. But I also think it's the same with negative gossip and talk. Like, mm -hmm. Well, you, oh, everyone's absolutely. Facebook feeds and YouTube feeds are just full of negative yeah. and arguments and I'm drawn to it too like when people start arguing I'm more likely to eavesdrop into an argument than I am yeah, like I mean, a, a good thing I'm glad you brought that up I want to just finish quickly yeah. before I lose the train of thought the same way that we need to recognize that our body may want things that we don't actually need because of the way it's programmed from a long time ago I also think that the fear and the negativeness that we desire also has to be limited and I think it's important like I've cut up Facebook I've cut out a lot of things where I find that I just waste this energy and this like time reading and it just yeah. gets me fired up and there's no benefit from it but I also do think there's a point where I've gone too far like I've completely separated I don't even look at the news like dude I didn't even know the issue with Iran where Trump assassinated like the second or third highest official in Iran and then there was the plane that crashed I had no I, I knew the plane crashed I had no idea that guy was assassinated for weeks like I was just oblivious so I think that there's a limit where maybe we should know what's going on in the yeah. world to an extent I think I may have 
the pendulum may have swung too far and I just cut out too much of that from my life but we have to recognize that you can't consume that all day every day mm -hmm. it's not good for the mind just like eating sugar is not good for your body that's wild that's a that's a great point huh I interrupted or I cut you off yeah I was gonna add to the fact I was just glad that you brought up the term gossip and uh cause that cause like social media platforms promote that essentially and like when you go out with friends it's gossip it's like da 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 this this person da 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 this girl da 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 my friend who lives with my friend here and you're just like da 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 um it's exciting it's stimulating um and, and it's good it's healthy right cause that's what that's just social gossip nature, was good right? when you were in a tribe because if yeah. there was an army yeah. coming down and you heard it first you're valuable but my thing is like we're not reaching that next level by doing this like there's a limit to how, where we should hold ourselves and if it like say we wake up in the morning and we immediately cling to gossip and what people's schedules look like we're forgetting ourselves we're forgetting like our who we want to become we're forgetting that's why I alluded we're to forgetting it like our fulfilling tasks it's a distraction is what it is yeah and that's why I said earlier with the daily stoic waking it's up exhausting right it puts you into like the planetary like view of of like either I'm a problem or I'm in somebody's way and then the Stokes come in and they're like whoa 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 you're in your feelings like this person who you have an argument with is not valuable like don't think about the argument the argument is not valuable the person is valuable Stokes lean heavily on like yeah the person you, is there's valuable two, there's two illnesses one that makes you think that you're worse than someone else and one that makes yeah. you think that you're better than someone yeah, else yeah. yeah the argument's not valuable but to stress it is to cause yourself harm. Yeah, it's worse in your mind than it is in reality. So, so like, but I alluded on it earlier, talking about the daily stoic. You were just talking about having the gossip at your disposal when you wake up and you're just being influenced by it. That's why I said switching from not checking my phone until 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. and reading a passage from a book, I'm starting proactive, not reactive, and it mm -hmm. fully changes my day. Yeah, and like the days that I don't do that, I notice differences in my mood and like I even want to say like energy like I feel more drained when I end up reading mm -hmm. arguments or just like debates and yeah it's weird the next that but new Burberry jacket for me I got a question though yeah I'm kind of confused because you talk about gossip and how the social media platforms encourage it is there a difference between that and a vlog well Good question. Well, I'm not necessarily promoting the gossip. All the ultimate goal for me is to, like in a, in a video, is to just be on the creating spectrum. And then I share it. And that that's for up to people to choose. Yeah. And uh, if they want to speak on it, share it, I or, think like, or like argue about it, that's on them that's okay but I but think like it's I, also on you to look at someone else's tweet or post about whatever it is they're talking about and if you're interpreting it as gossip or a negative thing they're just putting the content out you know I don't think yeah. that the platforms that lean towards showing you gossip or showing you arguments or whatever it is it's an algorithm that leans towards what you engage in mm -hmm. so if you're engaging in things that are skating you're going to get more skating if you engage in political arguments you're going to get more political arguments yeah and it's not them throwing it down our faces, it's what, it's mirroring what we actually end up watching and wanting to see. Yeah. Which is, I bet you, you can learn a lot about someone's YouTube recommended field. Learn about Definitely. them as a person. That's why I use brave.com, because nobody can see my browser history. Brave.com. Not the browser history, but like, no, like the, the, the browser eliminates the compatibility with like other browsers. Um, I don't understand what you're saying. Brave.com? And, and, and you can eliminate, you can turn cookies off, which is... That's big. Which is the tool that is the algorithm to suggest these videos and content, right? Cookies is what 
like so many platforms use to like promote and stuff shit in your face. Do you know what a cookie is? Do you know how it works? Um, I just know the concept. I don't know the, the, the mathematics or like the, the engineering behind it. I don't it know f- either. It feeds off each click. I know that it like creates. It, it basically a holds you account. It holds your history and just like it. it, it like creates basically an account. creates your personal. It, it reads your personal, like search engine and formulates recommendations. I thought what it was was. If I'm correct, it creates. I'm, I'm hoping any of you out there. It creates a me. folder on your computer, and then this will now tell them every time you engage in something similar related to that product. So now it know it's keeping track of. Yeah. I think it's limited to that field. It leaks. So if you were on Mac or MEC, yeah, whatever. it's funny because um, this browser also eliminates ads. Brave dot com, so it's a website. That it's you, a web- you go it's a, it's a decent- any browser you can go there. It's a there? decentralized en- search engine. So it's like, okay. and it's also linked to cryptocurrencies. Okay. So, but you could use that in Safari or Firefox or Chrome. No, it's its own browser. It's its, it's own, own browser. browser. So it's not dot com. It's just Brave is the name Brave, of the, yeah. but, applic- uh, or the browser. It, it blocks all ads, so if you can go, you can go on like any streaming website, you know, Spotify, SoundCloud, or not. Actually, no. Only only uh, search engine like Spotify, you can't block ads because it's not web based. It's its own app. On well, you download. You can do web based Spotify. Can you? Okay. Yeah. So it and SoundCloud, I can click next to like unlimited amount of times and I'll never have to listen to some trial record like bullshit YouTube I don't have to listen to ads I don't have to I'm basically not paying any of my favorite YouTubers <laughs> which is like the funny which is the downside maybe but um, <laughs> like <laughs> you know when people put ads in their videos it's like sorry I'm not paying you because I have brave yeah you're you're definitely taking some revenue from them for sure. I can't argue that. Like I'm not paying but the views are also can be turned to revenue too. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you had if you had a million views and nine hundred thousand of them didn't click the advertisement, yeah, like you so still have like, a million I views. my videos because man, it's to get paid. Like, and well, you can even see sorry, it now. Not me. A lot of popular podcasts they actually instead of having the ad revenue come from YouTube inserting an ad during the middle, at the beginning, the end, wherever they put it, they actually just stop. And today's episode is brought to you by this. <laughs> and they actually just say it and read it out. Which I kind of like more because I listen to a lot of like comedians. That, yeah. and, and they're just, funny when they're just talking about the, yeah. the fucking dick gum with the blue chew. Really? It's funny listening to them talk about blue chew. Huh. Um, it's like Viagra, but you take gum and you chew really? gum. and it's Jeez. Yeah. But well, I enjoy, funny. I'd rather <laughs> listen to the comedian talk about this dick gum <laughs> than actually have like an ad that I have to click skip in five seconds like... Yeah, it makes it more enjoyable if I'm yeah, gonna get like, sold. I don't know, to like people like Tim Ferriss, like uh, recommend good product for sure. Yeah, they recommend like mushroom coffee. And yes, yeah, usually that nature like like performance products. Well, I think that's what made podcasts so it's popular. Exciting. Like this, or like or like Audible. Cool. I don't actually use Audible, but it's a I respect com- it. Yeah, I think I would use it. YouTube podcasts, everything in this field. The reason it's so successful is because you start to learn and trust the people involved. Mm-hmm. So when this person tells you, like, no, I actually, like, I use this product, that means a lot more because in my mind I have this relationship with a person that's never met me. Yeah. But you are related to, like, not related, but you are attached to them. They're in your life. And then when they tell you this, you're much more impressionable than if you just see this blanket mm-hmm. ad campaign for five seconds of whatever it may be you know like yeah yeah and they also can cater towards their audience if this yeah. one person talks about bowling every day all day you're gonna probably assume his listeners are somewhat interested in bowling or he's just somehow or she's bowling. somehow interesting yeah. but like they would advertise bowling it's kind of related like, it's easier to target buy the 10 pin kit <laughs> please <laughs> tired of your 14 pound ball your thumb hole too small? Me too, buddy. Dude, I have to bowl. When I bowl 10 pin, I have to get like the heaviest bowl there. Because yeah. my thumb knuckle, look at that thing. It is like so wide and yeah. fat that every time I take like a normal size bowling ball, 
I put my thumb in, and as soon as it goes in, I realize that I'm fucked because I can't get it out. And then when I throw it, it just like no. I've had it stick on my yeah. thumb and like throw in the air, um, and dude, my thumb gets swollen and super red and inflamed like afterwards. So every time I bowl, each throw gets worse, and I have to take the heaviest one just because the hole's big enough for my thumb. It's brutal. Fuck yeah. ten pin. That always stress me out too. I my like fingers get stuck. And stuff. Dude, every time. Like, look at the difference in my thumb knuckle versus, like, every other yeah. knuckle I got. Bowling Three times the size. Bowling ain't for me. Yeah. <laughs> Five pin, maybe. Five pin. That's May- maybe. I don't maybe. like it. I like it. Bowl 450. Dude, I'm happy you came on the podcast today. I really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure what we were going to talk about. But I know what we're going to talk about after we log off this. <laughs> Do you know what we're going to talk about after we log off this? Not completely. What do you think? Uh, I think we've already been over this. I am uninformed. <laughs> no. Skate park stuff. Oh, that's I'd right. like to get your opinion on some skate park okay. stuff. Yeah. Well, speaking of skate parks. Let's hear it. Lastly... I, I I don't know if you mentioned if you if I told you this, but in like grade eleven or twelve, one of like the first architectural courses I took in high school, I wrote like right before graduation. It's probably right before graduation. I wrote like a, a short essay, might as well call it, to New Line Parks, to New Line Skate Parks, like about how I could get involved with what education I would need, and like I'm influenced. This is what I do. I draw all the time, all that. And I didn't get a response, but I have the email in my notes on my on my computer, and I could pull it up. Damn. I could email it to you, and I'd love to read it. It'd be great. Yeah, dude, I wrote a very so similar funny. email, but uh, didn't get, didn't get the dude. The I didn't notes. get a reply from them, but for it's probably like, four years. Yeah, and then out of the blue, um, do you know Zev Klamocha? No, he used to be a circa rep. He's Calgary based. But he was cool. a Circa rep for Alberta back in the day when Ontario boy. When Circa was like a thing, uh, I wanted to get on Circa, and I wrote this n- essay. Is cutting it short. It was a novel. I wrote a novel. <laughs> it's a novel. And I had a lot of help from my pe- friend uh, Ben Lotz. You know Ben Lotz, yeah. obviously. Yeah. He helped me. He just pulled me aside one day. He's like, "Dude, you need to market yourself." He's like, "I think that you could do." much greater things than you're already doing. He just, like, believed in me a lot and, like, had some real mentorship moments there with me, you know? He was a leader. And yeah. he helped me write this essay to... Novel? Novel, yeah. <laughs> he helped me write this short story to Zev about getting on Circa. That fell through, but I wrote another email to New Line that was separate from this entirely. But it ended up that Zev was the social media guy for New Line. And then four or five years later, they needed someone. Yeah. And then Zev messaged me, yo, you went to school for civil, right? Yes. You still in Vancouver? Yes. No reply. Two days later, voicemail from the boss. He's like, come in for an interview. Like, I sent that resume. It's so outdated. You know, like it was yeah. a long time ago. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up hope. Do you still, is that something you want to do? Would be to work in your life? I'm uncertain. You're uncertain. I'm not. I feel like a different person. So, not entirely. Yeah. If it's something that you want in the future, let me know. I will. Um. Cause like that's what I. That's who I am. Shapes. Um. Accuracy. And just creativity. Decisiveness. Like, like let's, let's be honest. I'm going to break it to you. I was drawing skate parks on tests. Because, like, when that, that high school shift into, into, like, a different province, it's just, like, you start to, like, notice the groups, the the clinging, the... All this, like, thing... All, you just have a different view of the function of this system. And then you just start to perceive the value of certain actions. And I guess my values were starting to like wean off of like formality and into like I'm gonna be me I'm gonna be as authentic as possible but I took all the courses I need to, to like 
I have the credentials that can get me into landscape architecture or urban planning, for example. Probably could use some upgrading, of course, usually. But, hence, skate parks on tests. But I'd always inspire the shit out of myself by just, like, if I didn't know shit about a certain subject, like math, I would start drawing, like, cameras in a mountain range and, like, a van and then, like, a skate park with, like, three-dimensional features and, like, things that I'm trying to skate, like a plaza, marble ledges, like, just yeah. all those details. And then I just hand a test in. Be like, yeah. You did that on a math test? Completed this thing ooh, above and beyond. <laughs> so you put a skate park... Well, she's like, mountain, she's like, draw something on the back, and I'll, or like something like that. And I just, for a math test? For a math test. Okay. It's like an algebraic lesson that I have. I think they mean show you to work. But, but like, I, listen, this is the thing, though. <laughs> we're gonna, let's continue. Uh, this is a point in my life where it's just like um, very alone, like times, right? And uh, like the only friend group, the only belonging I had as soon as I switched four provinces from Ontario to Alberta was like skateboarding. Because it's so effortless to create a community. And that's like, I only had like two people who skated at my school because it's just like not common. And so I'd always bust 45 minutes after school and 45 minutes back just to skate, just to feel like I have a belonging or have a purpose. And so school was kind of like, I was always like, I was, I was always prompt, always attending on time, everything, right? But it just didn't seem like the fit. And uh, like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna study for algebra and be more alone. I've already spent enough time the previous day being alone, so I'm gonna go avoid this study, create my fulfillment, and and like belonging, and then come back at like 11 p.m. at night, and then go to sleep, and then wake up, go to school. So I was never prepared for the test because I already didn't feel. I wasn't comfortable. I was not mentally well. To be able to just be like, oh, I'm gonna grind up this, this like, these problems, right? Like, there's no belonging at home. You think I'm gonna, you think I'm gonna promote something that isn't gonna fulfill me or create a belonging or a purpose? Right? You prioritize your mental health. Yeah, I prioritize like algebra. mental health versus like my my s- systemic performance. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it has benefited me, so I don't second guess myself. You can always reroute. You can always upgrade. Um, Dude, ch- plans change. Like you, People can, you change. could be an academic boss. Like I could start trying to be an academic boss right now. I just have to put my mind to it, you know. I think it's more than putting your mind to it because yeah, you've like, you've echoed a few times that purpose is very important for you. Yeah. So if you didn't have a purpose. To be the All boss. Right. No boss. I don't think that you could put your mind no to it. No boss mathematicians. There's something about, like, at least for me, there's things that I know that I should be doing. Because just, like, the pure joy that I get by doing them. And, like, when you don't recognize that an hour or five hours pass, you're doing something yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. This, let me, let me just t- put this in here. Video editing. Five hours goes by, it's 4 a.m. What am I doing, right? Okay, sorry. No, it's good though. Like, so I think that it's more than you just putting your mind to it. I don't think that anyone can fully commit. I again, I don't, I don't yeah. know how other minds work, but I can't relate. If someone else could put full, full heart into something, yeah. if it's not something that they enjoy doing, yeah, I like, get it. One, yeah, sorry. Should I, you continue? No, no, go ahead. Okay. I was gonna say though, math is actually very fulfilling. I love like, math. S- um, I just don't see the the. the the next level and I just don't see the next level of where I'm going to use this um, it's very applicable but like even like even like uh, ex- like excellent financial business people are using like basic maths and like percentages and you know they're not they're not formulated the new algebra solution so they can buy 10 shares math started for a reason you know like we kept track of these things and like Math is very important in everyday life. I'm very biased. I've always loved math. Yeah. Like the opposite of you, where you're drawing a skate park in math class. I was. I. Well, I, yeah. I got called out by my dad. We were driving to hockey practice one day, or wherever the fuck we were driving. Who knows? When you're a kid, you just make up something. Like, yeah. We were on our way to school. I have no fucking idea where we were going, but I know I was in the car. I know I was in the front seat. 
and he just kind of like he di- didn't know how to ask it and he was like are you are you doing long division in the shower and with the steam in the water I would create really? equations of random numbers on the wall and I would do long division Jeez. and then I guess I just didn't clean it off but it like dried and you could like kind of see it yeah. and he's like I know it's not your mom like it's it's obviously you and I was like yeah like it's weird it's just an awkward conversation to have because I thought it wasn't cool to like math so I didn't like say that I was yeah. doing long division in the shower but like so I guess we're opposite like I do math yeah. when I don't know what else to do whereas you draw when you don't know what else to do yeah and I, I can't well, draw worse shit. I appreciate that side of the spectrum too, though. Like that's, that's I can't draw worse. That's shit, awesome, dude. and it's fulfilling because it's like you're creating solutions to like these complex problems, and like you, you're promoting like, yourself. It's exciting. But the only time, let me verify. The only time I was drawing a test is if I just like completely would have fluked it. Like yeah. if I was attempting it, it would just be like X's, X's, X's. When I could just be like promoting like some great future, I'm just dreaming. The, 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 the dreamer, you know? Yeah. I'm a dreamer. You're a dreamer, right. Liam. I'm in the clouds. You're always in the clouds. In the clouds. Walking by yourself in the evening. Yeah, I'm juiced. You think you see me alone? Fucking juiced, okay? Judging you, walking on the side Obviously, of the like, highs and lows. But, like, you get, you get the idea. Like, being alone is pretty stimulating at times. You're just like... Liam's juiced. You're, like, all on one. You're pretty introverted, I would say. You need some time to recharge after you yes. hang out socially. Yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of the opposite. It's weird, though. It's like, I could, like, yeah, like, once you leave, a, you leave us, sorry, you leave, like, a hectic situation, and it's just, like, calm. You sit on, like, the, the curb or something, you're just like, oh, more life, like, oxygen, like, you're just like, everything's so subtle now, and you're just it's quiet. It's no longer claustrophobic. Everything, you know, like, yeah, it's no longer claustrophobic. Exactly. People everywhere. You're like, shit, okay, the opportunity has r- returned, you know? I'm in the middle of that. Like, I'm definitely more extroverted than I am introverted. I always have been. But, I'm not, like, the most social. I would much rather observe mm. than actually partake. Like, I like looking at interactions. I like looking at the restaurant and, like, Who's on a first date? Is yeah. something big gonna go down? Like <laughs> you know, like I just always am looking somewhere else. Yeah. But I don't really have cool. to be the center of the room talking. Yeah. I'm okay to just watch. Yeah. But I'll end up talking somewhere in the corner of the room endlessly. Book like, recommendation. Quiet. By Susan Kane. Susan Cain? Yeah. Quiet? Good book. What is it about? Uh, introverts in a world that can't stop talking, I believe. Ooh. Anyways, I read that book. Pretty excellent. It primarily t- touches on introvertism, of course. But she, it's just like, it's never like, you're an introvert, you're an extrovert. It, it's usually a fuse of both. I mean, I'm a fuse of both, but primarily I'm on the introverted spectrum. Because, like, you need social encounters. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, a lot. But, like, I guess, like, what I'm saying is, like, I cling to, like, deep, meaningful social encounters. You know? I'm not trying to touch the surface. So, I'm trying to, like, really gain some insight that is going to, like, promote each other. I can relate. So. A lot. It's exciting. That's... That it's exciting that way. And you're always, just, it's, like, fulfilling, you know? Like, you're not, you don't go home and you're like, I... I'm gonna go to sleep. You're like, I, I gotta. What am I? What are my thoughts like? Processing what happened. What am I trying to create right now? Do I fully agree though? There's like, there's a difference between. They could have an hour conversation yeah. about this topic, or an hour hour conversation on another topic, and I would see one conversation topic outweigh the other one tenfold, like yeah. easy. And I think that a lot of people have difficulty breaking the barrier into those deeper conversations and that was the whole premise of the video series that I asked you to join in on I brought it up a few times on the podcast that I wanted to do this video series of interviewing 10 people we lost the studio space my friend moved out so we had to call it at seven um not as many girls as I I wanted five and five but I got five guys and two girls three of the girls ended up bailing and then we didn't have time to reschedule but 
these are all questions that I find help stimulate that deeper conversation. So as you notice on the 10 questions that you answered, those are questions that might not come up on an everyday like conversation, you know? Mm. You wouldn't do it at work making small talk. Yeah. But everyone has answers and they're not even necessarily embarrassing or like, yeah. it's not that they're hiding the fact that they want to talk about it. It just doesn't come up. So that was a really cool experience. Just actually getting to like hear your 10 answers, hear Anna's 10 answers. Here, Chloe, here, Ryan, here, you know, like just sit down and actually like right. learn about them all and learn about you all. It's, it was great. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited was, for that. It was exciting. And that's another reason why I want to do this podcast with you, Ken, because that was exciting. So this will different. come out much faster than the video. Mm -hmm. I haven't even gotten the video back from my friend yet. That's all right. Um, this will be up to It's the experience that matters. Mm -hmm. It's just like the, I don't have to, I, would, I don't have to watch the video. I just wanted to, it was a good experience, and like, to have that experience in my head allows me to move forward with some form of inspiration that I can kind of tap into when I see a use for it, or see some meaning behind it that suits some future project. So yeah. It's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. It wouldn't happen without people like you willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And now you met a new friend, Anna, yeah. which yourself admittedly will never see again. Uh, yeah. Nice to meet you. Never, never gonna see you again. But it was great. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and an excellent Korean dish. We did have really good that was, food. That was a. Did you enjoy it? Whew. Oh, you you got yeah, squid. Of course, yeah. Yeah, That's not a vegetarian. Spicy, spicy Do uh, elephants eat squid there, Liam? Certainly not. Yeah, kind of weird. I don't know. Certainly not. Uh, we should go next time. We're free. Let's go to a different Korean restaurant. I got a really good one. Dude, it's so yeah. good. It's the best Seriously. restaurant I've been to in a long, long time. Okay. Fucking love it. I have like... That one spot was like weird, but it was like exciting. It was some like it was good. floor, second story, like weird outlet mall. Yeah. Classic. That's right in the heart of like Little Korea in Is Coquitlam. It? Okay. That's like... That's probably bigger than yeah. Little Korea, the Korean yeah. population in Vancouver. Yeah, it's you're in Little Korea there. That's amazing. Yeah. It's sick. As if this place is really good I think I've got it's like top is this top one? 8 restaurants I've ever been to Robson and nope Fraser this okay. is Fraser in like 49 oh, okay. 48 oh, right way out there in the there. middle of nowhere so young <laughs> for a metropolitan uh, packed though for a downtown everyday packed rat. number 1 on Yelp in Vancouver hmm. which I never Overall, actually checked or Korean. in Korean okay Yelp.com, visit that. Thanks to today's sponsor, Yelp, .com. Yelp. Please support Yelp.com. But don't use Brave. Please use a regular browser that allows advertisement and cookies. Yes. We'd like Yelp to get all the money. Please we can. pay as many people as you can without physically sending them money. Views. It's all clicks, baby. <laughs> it's real. That's a wild. I feel like we should wrap. It's been an hour and a half. Is there anything you feel that we didn't cover that you'd like to talk about? <laughs> the not much, not much really. I don't think there's a purpose for the subject matter um, that we could have dived into, and I'm glad we didn't. But we could also save it for another experience where it would be more meaningful. What is that? Um, probably g growing up in as a skateboarder, right? Yeah. And like the experiences along the way of why you stuck with it, you know, things of that sort. Things very, very original things. Very like very uh, first-hand experience Relatable. of the activity. Like any so, skateboarder you meet around the world, yeah, you know they've dealt with some similar issues and similar experiences. Yeah, with even like if the world becoming aware different. of this activity, for sure. But. Yeah, I've, uh, I've covered that in a different area. So I've already I've covered that in a different audio recording. Which podcast is that? Want me to shout it out? Hell yeah. Why not? Okay. If you want to listen to the development of my experiences as a skateboarder, I don't believe it was fully covered. However, like I didn't, I don't think I elaborated too too much, but it's definitely it's definitely its its own 
if you want to hear Liam's voice again, <laughs> not super in depth, but a little in depth in his growing up skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty thorough. It's it's respectable. And shout out Luke Bradley of Red Deer Alberta. Um, if you want to go check out the podcast, it is Red Deer Originals on Spotify. So Red Deer Originals on Spotify. So give that a look if you want to hear my voice discuss some uh, Red Deer Originals situations. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Dope. It's three hours, actually. I believe in you. I, easy. Yeah. Like the hour and a half. Which is su- by. quite surprising because, yeah, it's, it's different. It's very comparable. You know, I honest, yeah, I feel as if this podcast relatively feels as if we cover like three hours worth of speech. One thing I noticed, last thing I can add to that, certain a lot of the times I'm like, damn, if I'm like recording uh, myself speaking or like vlogging, I'm like, damn, get the point across already. <laughs> I'm talking about everything but the point. I'm talking about the trees and the road on the way to the point, you know? Yeah. Like, get, yes. get to it already. <laughs> you know, like, we're not trying to sit around for you to find the idea that you're trying to say. Dude, I've been there where you're, like, literally, you don't know the next yeah. word that's about to come out of your mouth, <laughs> but you just know the string of words that you can possibly attach to it yeah. until you just keep following that, until the idea clicks in your brain, and then you can, like, almost make it seem like the sentence was intentional, but you're just making up every word as you go but, along. Yes. But, but this is what I'm, I'm not going to interrupt you here, sorry. No this problem. is what I mean with you uploading your project and your vlogs. If you notice that about yourself, like, maybe you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's just self-awareness that's going to come out of you doing this project even if it is amateur you're now growing and I think the self-reflection hits deeper when you actually listen back and you have the guts to put it out there in the world for them to see Like, mm-hmm. and I think once you have once you deal with the things that make you anxious or the things that maybe you're afraid of once they're out there and open the power is gone from them the power comes from when you're suppressing and hiding it and you don't want the world to know but like have you ever looked at someone confidently admit their flaws and then you realize you're like oh fuck I can't make fun of it anymore like there's no there's no negative association attached to it that's I love that yes like, it's I love that that's yeah, why as long I, as they're trying to get better like I they're like acknowledging yeah, absolutely it's, it's it's awesome because like I don't know am I I've experienced that once where I just admit my flaws like no ego just I'm wrong like I'm sorry I'm wrong okay or yeah. like you know, just play it up, blatantly admit it. And it's because you have empathy, right? You're truly wrong. So just admit it. And, uh, it's yeah, courage nine, time, nine, too. Time, nine times out of ten, like, there is no resistance after that point. Like, you, that you uh, argument finished. We should wrap, though. This has been okay. a blast. We went, we touched off some subject matter. Totally. It was exciting. I didn't know where it was going to go. We strung our ideas together successfully. Mm-hmm. We were even completing each other's. Yeah. We're building off each sentences. other. Sentences. Yeah, we're trying to like we're trying to continue each other's <laughs> that sentences. That's T-ball, buddy. Oh, what are you saying? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Let me continue it. Okay. Let me complete it. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone who listened. 